VR and AR are completely new art forms. And it's something that takes from all of the earlier art forms that came before it. That includes theater, that includes cinema, and it includes uh, things like operas and music, musical, musicals. And you take all of those things, and including gaming, and you put them inside of what we call a real-time engine, and you're able to see in virtual reality. To create for this environment, what we think is... But I, I, get the, I get the technology part. Absolutely. But the storytelling part has got to be really difficult because the viewer's yes. not in a static position, right? If you, yeah. In a comic book, the viewer's there. Yes. Right? In a movie, the viewer's there. In TV, right. the viewer's there. This, this the, the viewer's world moving around. Was all around we, were, us. we were walking around. The viewer, our right. viewers can't see it, but mm -hmm. we were walking around this planet. We saw the little prints come out. You we could got, turn around 360 degrees, and there was a solar system. The sound. The sound was amazing. Where if, if you turn your right head, you'd hear the, the watering can mm -hmm. here. You turn this way, and you hear it in your left ear. Yeah. Well, the good news is we have veteran storytellers at Penrose, people who have told stories in CG movies. What's interesting, as you pointed out, Corey, is you have to rethink how to tell these stories. It is such a new art form that's similar to how, you know, mobile apps, you know, when you create things for mobile, you have to create in a very native way. For VR, AR, you basically have to have something that's created completely natively for the environment. You know, we have veteran storytellers, but they have to rethink the ways in which they normally tell stories in order to tell their stories in virtual reality. So that was my very first VR okay. experience. I was a VR virgin until, <laughs> until until now. And I have to admit, I was one of the skeptics. Why did Facebook spend $2 billion on yeah. this virtual reality company? You know, what are the other possibilities? Like, mm -hmm. Beyond entertainment, beyond a, you know a 15-minute movie, what else can you do? That's right. So you know we at Penrose think that there are going to be several killer apps that are developed for this environment. One of the things we think is something that you just saw, which is virtual reality stories, episodic content. We think that that's going to be one of the things that that is, uh, drives the early uptake of this platform. Obviously, there are big implications when it comes to education, when it comes to um, gaming, when it comes to things like healthcare and sort of virtualized, um, virtualized uh, uh, meetings, for example. You know, Skype. Can you, can you imagine doing a telepresence-oriented uh, VR uh, conference call, for example? Uh, being in London but feeling like you are talking to them face to face. Right. One of the things it was lacking is the social experience of going to see a movie right. or yep. watching a television show. No, I wanted show. to tell like, you what I was I saying. I know, I wanted to like uh, look at you and talk to you yeah. and I was a little scared at first because I was in the middle of this <laughs> other world. Right. But can you look can, down and saw the planets floating below you? Yeah. Can it be made to be a more social experience? Absolutely. So I think, you know, that's one of the big things we're focusing on at Penrose is the idea of building mul multiple worlds. Uh, one of the things that we think is persistent universes, right? The idea of multiple universes, the idea of being able to be whatever you want it to be in those universes. You know, what also interesting yeah. to me is, is, is the duration of this. Uh, I've, I've read VR theorists who say that mm -hmm. because the experience is so, so much more than just video or audio, mm -hmm. that Intense. it gets exhausting. Mm -hmm. And right. that, that maybe five minute episodes mm -hmm. is, is doable, right. maybe a two and a half hour movie isn't. Well, you know, Corey, uh, the first uh, uh, film that exists today by the Lumiere brothers, 1896, was about 45 seconds long. Right. No one back then probably thought that, they, that a movie could last you know, 90 minutes or even longer. I think VR is so early, we can't actually know today how, how long someone will stay. But we at Penrose think that it will probably take um, you know, the next few years for us to discover. Five minutes is a good, good number for now, but I think that number is going to be But I don't know higher. if I could handle two and a half <laughs> hours of The Godfather. <laughs> like seriously, like, like serious drama where you're right. so immersed I don't know. It seems like it'd be a lot too much. Can we biologically handle that? Can we, well, I think the thing I think we'll discover that over the next few years. But what's interesting, though, is that the technology so early, perhaps it's hard to imagine now. But when the technology gets to something that's very seamless, when you look at movies in the future, um, things like the movie Her, for example, where you see augmented reality experiences, I think you'll find that as that develops, it's going to become a lot more natural. I remember back in 2007 when it was strange to have a smartphone in your hand, and now it's ubiquitous. Right. I think we're going to see the same cycle happen with VR and AR.